Thank you for the introduction. Uh, today I will be talking to you about uh, resonant toning diode oscillators and their application to high performance sensors. So this is an outline of my talk. After a brief introduction, I'll talk about the features and uh, possible applications of resonant toning diodes, uh, RTDs in short, and also the RTD oscillators. And next, I'll talk about the application of RTD oscillators to sensors, where we employ the uh, frequency delta sigma modulation technique, uh, which is based on the uh, uh, frequency modulation signal. Uh, here, I'll talk about two types of RTD FM, FDSM sensors we study. And then I'll talk about some, uh, uh, some problems in RTD oscillators. Uh, such as stability. Uh, I'll summarize my talk. Now I'll begin with the introduction. The resonant diodes have a relatively long history of about 50 years. So it began with the proposal of the artificial super lattice by Professor Esaki in 1969. Then it was followed by the observation of the negative differential resistance in uh, uh, NDR, in short, in Germ-Arsenide aluminum Germ-Arsenide super lattices. The first observation of the NDR was in 1969. Then, in 1970, 1971, 1972, 1973, 1974, After that, the resonant diodes have been attracting a great deal of attention for ultra high frequency applications. Uh, owing to this uh, nature of very high frequency operation. So this is a uh, basic structure of uh, resonant diodes and its uh, conduction band diagram and the uh, transmission electron microscopy image of the, uh, this uh, structure. So the RTD uh, consists of narrow band gap and the wide band gap uh, semiconductors. Uh, typically, it well, is uh, uh, made of uh, indium gallium arsenide and the aluminum arsenide material system on indium phosphide substrate. Uh, when the so narrow band gap semiconductor is uh, sandwiched by two wide band gap semiconductors, the energy is condensed right here. And it was called, uh, is called quantum wave, and the electrons having an energy equal to this uh, quantum level can pass through the barriers, while the electrons that don't have such an energy uh, have um, extremely small chance of passing through. So due to this mechanism, uh, very uh, clear uh, negative differential resistance can be observed in the IV characteristics. Uh, this is an uh, example of the indium gallium arsenide, aluminum arsenide uh, RTDs. A most important application of the RTD is an oscillator. Uh, the negative differential resistance can act as a basis for very simple and high performance oscillator. So owing to the very high frequency nature of uh, RTDs, so this type of uh, uh, oscillators have been uh, studied. So here is the uh, waveguide oscillator with its equivalent circuit. And uh, so 712 gigahertz oscillation was reported in 1991. However, after that, uh, the uh, interest to this type of oscillator has been has, uh, lost. This is because that uh, there was no practical applications. The situation was changed. A situation changed uh, when the uh, terahertz wave applications uh, inter uh, attract, attracted uh, much attention in uh, these uh, the, uh, these years. Uh, in 2004, the Tokyo Tech Group uh, reported the uh, resonant diode oscillators with integrated with um, slot antenna, and it was followed by other groups. 
and the oscillation frequency has been, has been uh, continuously increasing, and that is the, uh, the now the highest oscillation frequency is 1.98 terahertz. At present, our main target of the RTD is, is a wireless communication. So there are many reports on the, uh, this area. However, uh, other applications are also uh, promising. Uh, we are working on the application of resonant diode oscillators to sensors, where the frequency delta sigma analog digital conversion technique uh, we employ, uh, which is based on the frequency modulation signal. Uh, it has uh, various advantages, such as the intrinsic digital output of the sensor and the high dynamic range and wide frequency bandwidth. So here, I first uh, explain the, uh, some, uh, briefly the Delta Sigma ADC. Uh, among various types of analog digital converters, the Delta Sigma ADC has a very unique uh, advantage. That is, the high resolution can be easily obtained by increasing the sampling rate. It uh, does not require high accuracy analog components to uh, achieve high resolution. So this is a block diagram of the Delta Sigma ADC. It consists of Delta Sigma modulator and the digital filter. So this uh, modulator converts the analog input signal uh, into the one bit pulse density modulated uh, digital signal at the sampling frequency much higher than the Nike straight. So due to the oversampling and also uh, the noise shaping, so the inbound noise, accountization noise is very much reduced. So this modulator uh, converts uh, the, uh, this modulator reduces the uh, Quantization noise at low frequencies at the expense of its increase in high frequency. So you can see there's a 20 decibel per decade dependence of the uh, noise, uh, quantization noise. So this is called uh, noise shaping. So due to the oversampling and the noise shaping, uh, shaping so very low quantization noise is expected. A key part of this uh, ADC is the uh, delta sigma modulator, and we employ the uh, novel delta sigma modulation technique called the frequency delta sigma modulator. So it, this is the block diagram of the FDSM. Uh, it consists of an uh, oscillator whose of frequency, oscillation frequency depends on the input signal and a small digital circuit uh, which works as an edge detector. So this uh, oscillator converts the input analog signal into the frequency modulation signal and this edge detector converts this FM signal to one bit pulse density uh, modulated digital signal. Uh, so it, uh, uh, this circuit uh, outputs pulses when the uh, FM signal cross the zero volt line. So very easy to uh, fabricate, uh, easy to obtain the uh, pulse density modulated signal. So when the, uh, if the frequency of the oscillator is controlled by uh, certain physical quantity such as strain or something like that, it can be used for a sensor. So this type, uh, this modulator, uh, the performance of this modulator depends strongly on the oscillation frequency so that the higher FM frequency, uh, FM carrier frequency leads to higher dynamic range and higher SNR so that the uh, employing the resonant diode oscillator is very promising. So this is a first example of our uh, result. Uh, the first one is the strain sensor. Uh, for this strain sensor, we fabricated a strain sensitive resonant diode oscillator. This is a micro photograph image of the fabricated device. It consists of uh, 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 LC parallel resonator and the uh, cantilever. So the resonant diode is placed on the root of the cantilever as shown in this SEM image. When the so cantilever moves, uh, the uh, strain indu is induced on the RTD. 
So this is an example of the IV characteristics of the fabricated RTD. Uh, we uh, measured the IV characteristics with the uh, pushing down the cantilever by microprobe. So the tensile strain is induced on the surface of the beam and on the RTD. So you can see the uh, peak voltage shift uh, to higher frequencies when the strain is applied. So this is very small, but uh, this peak voltage shift uh, causes a frequency shift and can be used for the FDSM. So this is an example of the oscillation frequency of the fabricated device. Uh, the oscillation frequency is plotted on the, uh, as a function of the micro probe position, so pushing down the cantilever. So the uh, circuit uh, oscillates at around 10 gigahertz, and the, if when we pushing down the uh, micro probe, then the oscillation frequency uh, reduces like this. This is the basis for the FDS. Yeah. To demonstrate the uh, delta sigma modulation concept, so we uh, ex performed the experiment uh, with this setup. The fabricated uh, circuit is placed on the uh, piezoelectric vibrator on the uh, probe station, and the uh, low frequency micro probe was set to touch the cantilever. So this induces the uh, strain on the RTD, so when the piezoelectric vibrator moves. And uh, so DC bias and RF output is from here, and uh, uh, out output RF signal was sampled by the storage oscilloscope, and uh, the uh, digital circuit, uh, digital circuit I uh, explained was uh, emulated by uh, computers. So this is an example of the uh, FFT, uh, fast Fourier transformation formation result of the output digital signal. So as you can see that the uh, quantization noise decreases when decreasing the frequency by 20 decibel per decade. So this clearly demonstrates the uh, noise shaping. And you can also see the signal peak at here. So we apply the uh, one megahertz signal to the piezoelectric vibrator so you can see the uh, signal peak here. So here that uh, the peak intensity is plotted as a function of the vibrator displacement, uh, the amplitude estimated from the piezoelectric constant. So you can see the so 20 decibel per decade uh, de dependence. So this means that there's uh, so a very good linearity. And also you can see that the very small displacement of about uh, 0.3 nanometer can be uh, clearly detected at one megahertz frequency. So now let's move on to the uh, second example. So here is the FDSM ultrasound sensor based on the resonant atomic dial oscillator. So this is a uh, schematic diagram of the uh, this sensor. So it consists of a uh, disk type resonator, so suspended microscopic disk type resonator. Uh, and the key point is that the backside ground plane is uh, replaced by thin uh, aluminum diaphragm which modulate the resonant frequency of this resonator. And uh, it is uh, based, uh, for the FDSM. So the good sensitivity and very high Q factor can be uh, expected for this type of uh, sensor. So this is an example of the uh, calculated uh, result of the uh, frequency uh, dependence on the ground plane position, so it's a uh, diaphragm position. So for the, uh, in this case, so we assume that uh, using the indium phosphide substrate and the resonator diameter was 200 micron and the substrate was thin uh, to 50 micron. So here, that uh, the oscillation frequency was uh, a few hun uh, hundred gigahertz and uh, it decreases with increasing the ground plane distance. And uh, we uh, obtain, also obtain the sensitivity, which is defined by the uh, derivative of the oscillation frequency. 
So which is uh, more than, so one gigahertz per micron can be expected. So we fabricated a prototype device, not today, so in the phosphide service, on the, in the phosphide service set, but uh, using PCB, uh, printed circuit board, uh, using with the indium gallium arsenide, aluminum arsenide based uh, RTT chip on here, and the, uh, on the so 0.8 millimeter thick f of substrate. So this is a photograph of the fabricated prototype device. It, it's a uh, circuit. And so here we used the uh, commercial uh, aluminum foil for the diagram here. So these are uh, results. So this is a uh, output power spectrum of the uh, digital uh, output. So you can see the very good uh, noise shaping properties over than five decades. And also we also have uh, signal peak at here, so it's a one kilohertz. We applied the one kilohertz acoustic signal to the sensor. And also this is a, uh, obtained waveform. So we calculated the uh, sensitivity of this sensor of about one megahertz per micron. So as I said, that uh, uh, we, if we use the indium phosphide substrate with the thin, uh, so 50 micron thickness, so the more than one gigahertz per micron uh, sensing uh, sensitivity is expected. So it uh, means that the, this peak height should be enhanced by more than 60 decibels. This is very so promising result for future so application. Then, so I move on to the next uh, to topic. The some problems on the RTD oscillators. The first problem is that uh, so uh, spurious oscillation in the uh, bias line. The RTDs show negative differential resistances in the white frequency range from DC to terahertz, and also the LDR is off. Often, uh, NDR is also observed in the uh, bias line. So this means that the spurious oscillation is a very significant problem in the RTD oscillator. So this is due to the so two terminal device, uh, the RTD is two terminal device. So we often use the uh, stabilization register to compensate the negative re differential resistance in the bias line to here. However, to compensate the uh, NDR, uh, the stabilization register should be much smaller, so 10 ohm was less. So this means that the power consumption is very high. So in fact, that the power consumption in the stabilization register is all much larger than the RTD itself. So to solve this problem, we proposed the uh, using the hard type of data concept. So the hard type oscillator is defined as that uh, oscillator having the two stable states, oscillation and no oscillation. And it is necessary to excite them to initiate oscillation. So here is a very simple uh, example of the circuit. Uh, we uh, employ the series register in the bias line instead of the uh, parallel uh, stabilization register. So this uh, series register uh, suppress the negative differential resistance uh, like this. So you can see that the, in this IV cap, so no uh, negative differential resistance occurs, but jumps and hysteresis. So no oscillation occurs. But we, if we trigger the circuit using, uh, so here we employ the uh, capacitor coupled to trigger circuit, so the oscillation uh, begins. So here is the so, uh, phase space portrait of the soft type and the hard type oscillators. For the soft type oscillators, the origin is unstable and the self-excited oscillation occurs uh, anywhere in here to uh, using the part from these trajectories. However, the hard type oscillators, it, the uh, origin, is uh, origin is stable. And in this area, no oscillation occurs. So they are uh, to, uh, um, no, no oscillation occurs in, 
in this area. So to oscillate the circuit, we must kick off, kick out the state outside of this area. Then this all, uh, using this trajectory oscillation occurs. So this is the hard type oscillator. So we fabricated also the flow type device using uh, out of the chip and uh, uh, PCBs. So this is uh, an example of the uh, experimental result. So uh, this is a spectrum. And when the uh, circuit is applied, uh, the bias voltage is applied to the uh, hysteresis region. So no oscillation occurs here. Then we applied the uh, trigger power seat uh, repeatedly to the circuit. So it uh, so such trigger power has some uh, such uh, many uh, peaks. But uh, you can see the oscillation peak here. And uh, we stopped the trigger pulse. So then the uh, oscillation, stable oscillation is remain in the uh, spectrum. So this is, uh, this demonstrates the uh, basic operation of the hard type oscillator. So if we, we use this type of oscillator, so we can omit the uh, very high, uh, uh, the uh, stabilization register and uh, power consumption. And so finally, so I'd like to emphasize that the uh, significance of the phase noise in our uh, and uh, also uh, so the LTD applications. The uh, oscillator noise can be divided into two categories, so amplitude noise and phase noise. So the amplitude noise is not so uh, difficult to uh, reduce, uh, reduce and the significant problem is for the phase noise. So the phase noise uh, makes it impossible to recover baseband signals in the wireless communication system. And also in our case for FDSM sensors, the phase noise causes the noise flow uh, like this. So this is a very um, difficult problem. So, it is known that the most important origin of the phase noise is the surface defect in the active devices. And uh, due to the, uh, this the vertical type device have better uh, phase noise properties, it is known that, uh, that of the horizontal devices. So the uh, bypass transistors and the HBTs are better than HEMs and FETs. So we expect that there may be RTDs um, uh, very good, uh, better uh, phase noise properties, but uh, there were not so much reports uh, about the uh, phase noise of the uh, of the oscillators. So it must be clarified for uh, future applications. So this is a summary of my talk. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.